Hey everyone, Chris here from IELTS Advantage and welcome to day three of our IELTS listening mini course. So this week we've been focusing exclusively on helping you with listening. A lot of you contact us saying that you need a band eight or above in listening. So that's what we've been looking at this week. So day one on Monday, we looked at why many people struggle to get a band eight or above and it's really to do with the nature of the test and how you prepare for it. And we gave you some practice activities that are gonna help you improve your listening skills. So check that out. And then we also looked on Wednesday, day two, at how to keep track while you are going through the test so you don't get lost in the middle of the listening test because if you get lost, then you're going to be in trouble. And day three, what we're going to look at today is we're gonna look at multiple choice questions and we're gonna give you a step-by-step -step strategy for multiple choice questions. But the step-by-step -step strategy, the, the methodology behind it, the, the reasoning behind it will really help you with all questions. So we're gonna look at that and it will help you understand exactly what to do on test day. So what we're gonna look at first are common problems when it comes to multiple choice questions. So with my students, what I like to do when it comes to reading questions and listening questions is identify the common reasons why people make mistakes so that they're aware of those and they can you know, avoid those on test day. So there's some very, very common mistakes that people make and common problems that people have when it comes to multiple choice questions. So the first one is that when you are looking at, let's say you get a question like this, and um, one could be a home, one could be office, one could be at a depot. They might not, they might talk about all three of these. All right, so the, let's say for example, the question is you're listening to someone making an order. Um, so they want like a TV or delivered to the, delivered to somewhere. And they first might say, oh, could you deliver it to my house or my home? And then they'll say, actually, I'm at work that day, so I'll be in the office. And could you actually just leave it in the depot? So they've mentioned all three of these, and you might hear all three of those, and that might cause a lot of confusion because what a lot of people do is they will listen for the first one, and the first one they hear, they'll just tick that one because they know the recording is not going to stop. They're under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. And then they might hear office or depot later or a synonym of, of one of those. And they're like, oh, they panic and they lose track. So listen to the whole recording and be aware that they might talk about one, but that is not necessarily the correct answer. Problem number two is related to synonyms. So many of you will underline key words. So let's say, for example, this is the question and you'll be underlining home and underlining office, underlining depot. And because you've underlined those or highlighted those, you're really, really focused on those words and you're listening for those words. But in the, the recording, it won't actually state those words. It'll state a synonym or a paraphrase of that word. So it might say, could you deliver it to where I live or my house instead of home? I'll, I'll be at work. Could you deliver it there instead of office? Or they might talk about, could you deliver it to the, the company warehouse instead of the depot? So they're not really mentioning these words. They can mention these words. You should always listen out for them, but you should always be aware of synonyms and paraphrases as well. And that's the reason why improving your vocabulary will really, really help you improve your overall listening score. Common problems three and four. So you might, the first uh, common problem when it comes to here, imagine, you're listening and it's talking about a, diff a business and what the type of business is. So it could be a manufacturing business, an industrial business, or an agricultural business. The first problem is you might not understand what one of these words mean. And many people would panic and be like, oh, I don't know what agricultural means. And then you're going to panic and not really know what to do and you're gonna get really, really stressed out. The other problem is, let's say, it's definitely not this one, but it's maybe manufacturing or industrial. And these look, they're not the same, but they look maybe quite similar to, to you. So with most multiple choice questions, not only in, in the realm of IELTS, but most, you know, proper multiple choice question, there will normally be two or three that are very, very similar. Uh, so you have to understand the meaning. So that's where vocabulary comes in again. The, the wider your range of vocabulary, 
the better your scores are going to be because you'll be able to differentiate between the two. And then when you're listening, it might talk about something that's very similar to manufacturing and very similar to industrial, and you have to make up your mind and, do, and, and choose the correct answer based on what you hear. So those are four common problems. And what we also do with our students is this, the strategies that we give them help them overcome these common problems. So we build in mechanisms and steps that help them avoid these common problems. Because if you avoid the common problems, then you're well on your way to improving your score. So now I'm going to give you this step-by-step -step strategy. The first thing I'll say is there's no such thing as a super strategy or a magic strategy. Like you'll see on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, like power strategy or band nine strategy. There's no strategy in the world that can take someone from like a band six to a band nine overnight. It's not going to magically improve your listening skills. It's not going to magically improve your vocabulary, your general English, but it just helps you get into the habit of doing the right things and getting the best possible score for you. So they're very, very, very useful. And also what they do is we've mentioned habit. If you were practicing these strategies, what it does is when you practice over and over again using those strategies, when you go into the test, you know exactly what to do. So you, I don't like using the word like robotic. You're not like a robot, but nearly you see what I mean. You're just, you see the question and you follow a step-by-step -step system and that kind of frees up your brain to focus on thinking about the correct answer and thinking about the vocabulary and the synonyms and all of those things. So they're very, very useful but don't think that they are magic. They are not magic, they are not super. Um, they're not going, you can't just follow, you know, a step-by-step -step strategy and immediately improve your score. So let's look at number one. Number one, sounds very boring, but this is absolutely crucial. Read the instructions carefully. If you do not read the instructions carefully, you're going to lose marks. Many, many, many students come to me and they say, I've done 20, vocabulary or, or listening tests or 200 reading tests and I keep getting the same score and we look at their their mistakes and often it's nothing to do with the fact that their the level isn't high enough they're just not reading the instructions carefully if you don't follow the instructions you're not going to get the score that you need number two read and understand the question so the instructions and the questions are two separate things the instructions will be at the top and it's very, very important, for example, even in the reading test where it'll say, you know, do not write more than two words. If you write more than two words and or a number, all of these different instructions, if you don't do those things correctly, then you're going to lose the mark. But the question is separate. So understand the instructions and then understand the questions. Um, many of you don't use that time period effectively between you seeing the questions and the recording start. You're going to have a little bit of time, use that time effectively. If you don't understand the questions, it's going to be really difficult. It, like, it, it doesn't matter how good your English is or how good your listening skills are. If you don't follow those two simple uh, steps, you're going to be in trouble. And many of you might think, well, that's obvious. Like, I'm going to do that anyway. Most of your behavior is habit. You do the same things over and over again. Whatever your habit is, you will mostly do that. So using these strategies is guaranteeing that you will check the instructions, then look at the question and understand it. Because you're going to, by practicing over and over again, get into that habit. Step number three, underline any keywords. What are the keywords? So it will differ from question to question, but the words that you think are important in order for you to get the correct answer. So you can underline them, circle them, whatever you do, or you don't have to do that. You can just look at them and understand these are the words that I need to be listening out for. These are the important words that are going to determine whether I get the correct answer or not. Number four, think of synonyms. We've already talked about this. You might hear the keyword. So keywords are important, but you might not hear the keywords. You might hear a synonym, or even you might hear a paraphrase of the keyword and then do not mark the first thing you hear as we've already d discussed it might talk about one it might talk about another and then it might take that answer away and give you another answer 
listen to it all and then decide the correct answer. Not the whole tape script, but that whole part of the recording that deals with that question, don't mark the first answer. Think about it first and then mark the correct answer. And pick the correct answer or the answer that you think based on, you know, take an educated guess if you're not sure, but with multiple choice questions, always pick an answer. If you're unsure, you can maybe put an X beside it and maybe, you know, for example, if you're 100% sure, put a circle around it and then you can go back and make a decision. But with multiple choice, even if you, you know, if a monkey did it and just picked randomly, they would get more than if you don't do it at all. So please just do check um, and put the best answer that you can. And most importantly, move on. Do not dwell on the answer. If you can't think of a correct answer for the multiple choice one, just make your best guess and move on. And we talked about that in lesson two. So again, this strategy is not going to guarantee a band nine or anything like that. But what it does is it gives you the correct habit, the correct system. And the key is that you actually apply this strategy. A huge number of students email me and say, I used your strategy and I got a band six. It's like, what do you mean use? Oh, well, we read it and then we went into the test and we used the strategy. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not how you, you use a strategy. You practice, you implement it over and over and over again until it becomes habit, until it becomes second nature. And you don't even have to think about it as soon as you see the question. It's like, bum, 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 bum. Follow a system, listen for the answer, mark the correct answer. So that's the end of our listening course. If you want help with writing, speaking, reading, anything, we have a free fundamentals course and it also goes into listening in a lot more detail. So you can click on the link and get access to that. Or if you need extra help, we don't work with a lot of students. We only work with a very, very small number of people. But if you do need help, we answer every single email that people send us and we can talk about whether we could work with you or not or just help you out with a question. That's our email address and either myself or one of the team will get back to you. Thank you very much, guys. Hope that you have a great weekend and good luck to everybody doing the test tomorrow. Hope that you enjoyed that and see you next week. Bye-bye.